This is just a little one on how to attach objects or things you can't instance to your flocking agents. This can be particularly useful for lights which you can't instance. Here's the setup, we have this generator here. The end frame is set to 60 so we've got a bit of an offset. Quick look at the settings, I basically fiddled around with the minimum and maximum speeds and I also increased the avoid collisions. And then the goal which is just set to default settings. I'll keep this first example super simple. So what I've done is created a null and I've just added an item shape to it so we can see what we're doing. Next step is to open up motion options. Under add modifier, you'll add a flocking item motion. So let's just simply add that. Now occasionally you get this error. I've no idea what it is, but it doesn't seem to affect anything. Now you'll see this null that jumps to this second agent here. So if we double click on the flocking item, you'll see agent index one. Now moving this will jump to its corresponding agent ID number. As you can see, it defaults to one and there's one left over here for some reason. So if we knock this down to zero, it marries up. Obviously we want this null on all of the agents here and the easiest way to do that is simply to clone it. So under clone, you should see a quick clone. I've mapped it to my option D here. And just by selecting that, it'll automatically jump to our next agent for us, which is absolutely super handy. And hitting play, they're all now stuck to the corresponding agent. Let's delete all of those. And for an even quicker way of doing it, we know there's 15 here, so we only need to clone it 14 times. So let's go to, so let's go to clone current item, type in 14, that's it, done. So this comes in very handy, but if you'll notice, if you select one of these and try and move it around, you can't, it's actually locked to that agent, which leads us nicely into our second example. So second example is just a stack of rockets following a path. You'll notice all these keyframes down here. Originally this path was following a spline, but I decided to bake it and got a huge performance boost. One thing to point out, if we look at the generator here, we've got an instance generator on the flock and that is pointing to our rocket set to particles. Now, if we look under scale, you notice there's no randomness. They all have the same amount. This will make things a lot easier to line up later on. We'll move to the beginning of the timeline and we'll do the same as before with a couple of additional tweaks. So let's add a null to begin with. Let's call it thrust. We don't need to add an item shape to that, but I am gonna just go to motion options and add that flocking item motion. Double click at that, agent zero is what we want. So the very first one. If we take a look, there it is in the middle of the first agent. As we found before, we can't move this around, but we can add a child to it and move that. I'm gonna add a light and we're gonna try some volumetric lighting. So under light, one spotlight, just call it spot, that's fine. There it is there, I'm gonna untick parent in place. I'm gonna make the thrust the parent of that spot, so it should just jump into place. I'm gonna rotate it 180 degrees and just move it into place. P for properties, let's give it a bit of a size. And for performance, I'm gonna to go to the view and add a new view, and we're gonna use that for our VPR. Let's turn on the volumetrics. So Control P will bring up our render properties. Over in the volumetrics tab, we wanna use volumetric scattering. So we'll turn that on. Oh, and everything straight away is gone a little bit fuzzy. And this is because the other two lights I've got in the scene are contributing. So let's turn that off. So I have a distant light. So I need to turn that off. And I also have an environment light and I don't want that to affect volumetrics either. While I'm here, we could do this on a light by light basis, but this is like a global control, so I'm gonna turn this down to 30%. Let's tweak this spotlight a little bit. So select the spotlight and press P for properties. Let's add a gradient first. Plug the distance into the input and the color into the volumetric color. Nothing happens because it's black and we do wanna fade out to black. So we'll move this key a little bit further down. Let's make this key here, however, white. Something like that anyway. I think we could even push the alpha at the beginning, can't we? Is that... There we go, that'll overpower it, but uh, that's for you to play with. I'm gonna keep it 100 for now. We can come back and edit this at any point. Scrub the timeline, and this should be now married to that quite nicely, which it is, which is 
Excellent. The only other thing to do now is to duplicate this up as we did before, but with a slight twist. We can't use clone here, but we can use clone hierarchy. I'm in the old scene editor here. If we go to the newer one, we could always select that thrust, add clone hierarchy. We could do it that way. Nicely jumps into position. We could also go to the items tab, clone hierarchy, and do it that way. As you saw, I've got it mapped to a key here. So I could go F10 a couple of times, and there it goes. It's working its way down each of those agents. But let's just delete those for a second. I'm going to point you in the direction of Ernest Chan's site. He's got an excellent script here called Clone Item Plus. So download that. Link is in the description. So select the thrust. I have that plugin loaded. It's called Clone Item Plus. It's just off the screen here. I know there's 12 altogether, so I want to clone this 11 times. And I want Clone Descendants, which is the important button here. OK, that. And look at that. Everything has nicely jumped into place. Click this little button here and let's select all those spots. If we now want to change the lighting color of one of these, we don't have to redo this. There is a simple way. Making sure they're all still selected, let's press P on the keyboard and we'll go into the Edit Nodes button. I'm going to change some of these colors. Uh, let's say we wanted that. <laughs> Although it's only done one light here, we can simply just go to this little icon here copy and then just paste because they're all selected. It's a bit of a weird quirk but it's certainly quicker than deleting and then re-cloning everything. I've used lights in this demo but this could be applicable to absolutely anything. The important thing is to set up your first item and then clone. You also get a nice effect using inertia as a sort of a trail thing. Anyway again I hope it was of use.